Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Wednesday, June 8th, 2022, and today we are going to be talking about the CNN forecast from Harry Enten. He's a commentator on CNN, and he talks about what he expects to see this November in the 2022 House elections, one of the most important elections, the congressional races in which 435 House seats, all of them, are up for re-election in the pounds of power is determined by this uh, congressional uh, race. So looking at the many, many races that are up, we have been talking about a bunch of House forecasts, but none of them have said definitively that Republicans or Democrats are going to win or retain control of the U.S. House. What we have so far is a consensus forecast, which you can find on the website 270 to win. You have a consensus forecast, 200, uh, which shows 208 Republican seats that combine the ratings and predictions from three main polling companies, uh, and not polling companies, political firms, Sabato's Crystal Ball, the Cook Political Report, and Inside Elections, and also, I guess this is new, Split Ticket 2022 House Ratings. But what you find here is that it is very clear and consistent about where these ratings are. 208 Republican seats agreed upon across all four of them, and 193 Democratic seats agreed on across all four of them as well. The Republicans just about 10 seats away from a majority in the House. The Democrats, on the other hand, about 25 seats away. The point is that the 2022 House forecasts have practically always favored the Republican Party, but we haven't really seen numbers come out from major media firms like CNN until now. Harry Enten says that based off of where it is today, and he does make a note of saying it isn't today, it is November, but I can't imagine it getting much better. Harry Enten estimates that for the 2023 House makeup, Republicans will win 236 to 241 seats. The Democrats, on the other hand, 194 to 199 seats. Now, he says this is based off a formula of historic race ratings from Cook slash Inside Elections, and that's fair game. You know, this is just where we see the ratings, and I've shown you the ratings, 209, 208, hovering around there. But beyond that, it seems as if Harry Enten is expecting the Democratic Party to perform worse than what is suggested by many of these ratings, or suggested by, potentially, the lower end of Democratic expectations in these ratings. Because it isn't just Cook inside elections that, that are saying the Republican Party is going to win control of the House. In fact, they aren't saying that definitively. Harry Enten's estimate, on the other hand, CNN's practical estimate here, is that Republicans are going to return to a House majority similar to one of 2016, 2014, potentially, where Democrats aren't even at 200 seats. Now, the Democrats hit a very big low point back during the 2010 uh, House races. I'm going to actually find the numbers here, but I remember the Democratic Party lost about 63 seats. And where we are right now, the Democratic Party is certainly not going to lose 63 seats. And that's not because 2022 isn't going to be a year like 2010, because it very well might end up being similar to that year. It is because the Democratic Party does not have as much room to fall. In 2008, the Democrats won over 250 seats in the U.S. House. That's what allowed 63 seats to be lost. Right now, the Democratic Party is at 222, which means if they are to reduce down to even the low point, of 194, they're losing less than 30 seats. It's less than 30 seats. It's not as important or impactful as you might think, at least when it comes down to loss. But reducing the Democrats to the same level does just as much damage. Now, based off of where we are in congressional redistricting, I'm also interested to see where this 194 to 199 number is really coming from. Not at all trying to say that I don't believe it, because I can tell you now I do, but I also think that it's a bit difficult for me to see where this rating is coming from right now. I don't know if Harry Enten has done a district-by-district district estimate, which might be a possibility, but as of right now, I would say that this makes sense in terms of overall composition, but I would like to see where the individual districts are coming from, because also an overall possibility and overall likelihood could be changed by lackluster individual candidates, uh, sometimes even in, for example, California, where you might see a Republican or a Democrat locked out of a finalized race, meaning they can't even reach November because there are jungle primaries. There are some primaries where it's a runoff election and it might end up being, uh, you know, the bad GOP candidate versus the good one, the bad Democratic candidate versus the good one. 
a lot of possibilities, a lot of uncertainty right now. Uh, so there probably isn't a state uh, or district by district breakdown for this rating. But the characterization in terms of uh, the general sentiment of the nation and Biden's approval rating, generic ballot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, this makes sense. But it's putting it out in bold form, which I really haven't seen much from CNN or really any major media firm. When you take a look at ratings, sure, Fox News might release their power rankings. CNN might release their power rankings. But something of this really isn't seen too often. So I'm glad that we have it, and I'm very appreciative of it, appreciative of it because getting numbers from Harry Enten, who is a very well-versed political expert, is very nice to see. But it also is a bit reassuring to my videos, to others who have expected the exact same thing to come up at the House. Now, I will say that I did think the Democrats were going to hover around the low 200s. I didn't think they would reach the 190s, but that's also a real possibility. It's just a handful of seats that would cross them over the borderline of being in the low 200s, 201, 202, 203, to get down to 199, 198, 197. So definitely within the realm of possibility. But this should really terrify the Democratic Party because typically speaking, you wouldn't see a House estimate or a House makeup this early on in a campaign or in a general election season that is estimating such abysmal results. The Democratic Party is poised to lose, and that's not necessarily because of their own inability or whatever it might be. The Democratic Party is likely going to run a very good campaign for 2022. I can't say the same, potentially, about 2010 or 2014 because I didn't closely watch it, but from what I've seen for Democrats so far, They've been winning a lot of close and competitive primaries that, that are important in terms of getting the right Democratic candidate versus the not, or even some blowout primaries where Democrats are getting top tier candidates fielded, ran, and winning their primaries. But I will also say that some things just completely, um, you know, these voters. Where are the gas prices? Where is inflation? Where is health care? Where are all of these Democratic promises that were supposedly kept? Democrats can run a very effective campaign, but when it comes down to a point where voters are just simply angry at the Democratic Party, not a single good type of Democrat is going to be able to move beyond that. I will say that is not to say that Democrats can't salvage any of these individual races at all. I definitely think many of them are winnable. There's a reason why we do a lot of these House predictions with a range, because it can go from anywhere from being up or down. When you take a look at the Democrats and their expectations in 2018, they weren't expected to get as many seats as they did. In 2020, they were expected to get many more seats than they did. So predictions aren't fully accurate, ranges exist for a reason, but I will say that, generally speaking, the Republican Party does tend to come out ahead based off this map, and in ways that would completely remove the Democratic Party from the majority. But again, like I said, there are still some many races that the Democratic Party can hold on to. The way that redistricting benefits them now is that a bunch more states and districts are now more solidified in terms of being safe Democratic, safe Republican, lean Republican, lean Democratic. You take a look at the numbers, you take a look at the old maps versus the new maps. Democrats are about maybe five seats ahead of where they were on the old maps. Republicans are down maybe five seats from where they were on the old maps versus the new maps. Nothing super significant, but these minor changes make it so there are less competitive races and Democrats and Republicans are likely to maintain where they are right now. In fact, based off of this new map, there are only 40 highly competitive seats. Louisiana has yet to be reintroduced because there needs to be a second majority black district there that was ruled by a court. We will see what happens there. If you're wondering why Louisiana is absent, we actually had a finalized map uh, yesterday. So, or two days ago, and then it was struck down by the court. So, a waiting game for Louisiana, but for right now, we're going to go ahead and proceed talking about these house maps. I'm tired of waiting, to be completely honest with you. But the point is that the old maps versus the new maps put us in a position where there is less competitive races. But it seems as if Harry Enten is expecting that the Democrats win very few of these highly competitive races. There's 186 Democratic leaning seats. 203 Republican-leaning seats. Well, that means out of the 40 highly competitive seats remaining, and also the seven that need to come out of Louisiana, Republicans are expected to win the overwhelming majority of that, and Democrats are expected to capture a couple. This is, again, why this should be bad for the Democratic Party, and it's not as if they didn't get a warning about this. This is an article from Harry Enten back in December of 2021, right after the uh, Afghanistan uh, debacle really shifting down, the withdrawal from Biden, shifting down his approval rating nationwide. And from then on, it never, 
ever recovered. And that's not to say that it won't recover. I think it's possible that once we move beyond the midterms, once we move beyond some of these mainstream issues such as gas prices or inflation, things of that nature, that Biden could recover in terms of approval. But it was that turning point and that period of time where we started to realize that 2022 wasn't going to be this anomaly here where the Democratic Party was going to do better. I mean, I did say from the very beginning, knowing these House elections that from 2020, that Republicans were always going to win the House majority. It was just a question of by how much. But this should have been a very big sign for the Democrats that, hey, this midterm is going to be lost for you. You aren't going to win. Their Senate majority is thin. The House majority is thin. You know, what we're finding is that the Democrats are just vulnerable and Republicans are taking advantage of an unpopular president, just as Democrats did back in 2018, just as the opposition party always does in off years. I mean, at the end of the day, the Democratic Party can expect to lose by a margin, maybe as much as Harry Enten is saying, potentially more or potentially less. These ratings aren't finalized, and I'm covering it because it is coming from Harry Enten, who, again, like I said previously, is a political expert, and I trust a lot of his opinion. But that isn't to say that estimates can't be wrong. That isn't to say that Democrats could overperform or that can't overperform or underperform these numbers. And I'm not trying to at all cast doubt on the general idea of what we see so far. I still stand by the point that Republicans will win control of the House. But I will say that there is always uncertainty and that a map is never finalized. But I still have a hunch feeling and I see it based off not just a hunch feeling, but based off the data, based off the approval rating, based off the generic ballot. So there's a lot of things that go up into it. But American politics is tricky. It's difficult to predict. And polls sometimes are wrong and they give us an unfair and un. Uh, just completely wrong characterization of what's happening in the nation right now. So what I think we are going to see over the next few months is that more and more is going to come out showing the Republicans ahead. I think the Democratic Party should dread the day that 538 releases their House forecast because that will embolden conservatives. Because I promise you, it is not going to show the Democratic Party with a realistic chance at retaining control of the House. The same way Democrats were destined to win it in 2018, the same way Republicans were destined to win it in 2010. There are election years where you know straight off the bat from the first day that your president is inaugurated that the midterm election year will go against you. And that's the same thing that happened in 2022. And as of right now, Biden's approval rating is not doing well. It's down about 13 points nationwide at one of the worst points for the Biden presidency thus far. And he's only one point away from dipping into the high 30s. Not a good look, not a place that I would like to be if I was Biden. But of course, I'm not Biden. But it's definitely just something to take into consideration and understand as we head into a very hotly contested midterm elections. So looking at the approval rating, looking at everything else, I think we should definitely be seeing a lot more of these races end up flipping. But if you're talking about where they're actually coming from, well, I want you to take a look at a lot of these uh, prediction websites. I said that we don't really and probably don't have a breakdown district by district from CNN. But luckily enough, we have the ratings from Cook, Inside Elections, Sabados Crystal Ball, etc. And they show you that a lot of these races really are just in the competitively, competitively drawn districts, but in a lot of the same ones from 2020. You take a look. Well, you have Valadao, you have Garcia, you have Steele. These are all races that we knew were competitive back in 2020. You also have races here. Slotkin, Golden, Davids. These are all races that, again, were competitive back in 2020. There are some newly competitive races in some areas and districts that were previously safe that were now turned into competitive districts at competitive districts expenses turning into safe races. I mean, sort of a bunch of states had seen flips in their characterizations where one district might become a safe Republican to safe Democrat, but then it's offset by another district flipping in the opposite direction. Weird things like that happen in redistricting, which introduce new swing districts across the nation. But generally speaking, a lot of these are the same from 2020. And that also poses a real threat for the Democratic Party, because a lot of these close races from 2020 were lost by the Democratic Party. And looking at this national environment, you're talking about a Biden victory. You're talking about a three-point generic ballot victory. Many of these districts that were on the toss-up page on Cook Political Report two years ago are back there again. Except this time, I don't think Democrats are going to look out in as many of them as they did. And I think Republicans are definitely going to win many of these toss-ups. If you take a look at the New York Times, they did a toss-up page for their ratings. And guess what? Republicans won every single one. I kid you not. Every single toss-up district, according to the New York Times, was won by the Republican Party. 
The problem now is that many of these Democratic expected to win narrowly column districts are now shifted over to the toss up column, and you're going to see a repeat. All of the red areas won solidified through and through. This toss up area going to be won again, except this time it contains more Democratic districts. And that's likely what CNN is showing us right now. So CNN's expecting it. Cook Political Report is expecting it. Larry Sabato's Crystal Ball is expecting it. Practically everyone is expecting it so far. And I think it's fair to say the GOP has maintained their dominance in the House of Representatives. Again, things have a possibility, are in the realm of possibility at changing. But honestly speaking, from my perspective, I don't expect them to. And I still very much expect the GOP to win control of the House in 2022. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 House election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.